Hi all, this is Dana here. In this video I'm going to be showing you how to do what's called a double running stitch or a whole bind stitch. I think I'm pronouncing that correctly. Uh, basically it allows you to create a design on your fabric and then have the back look exactly the same. Uh, I will be eventually doing some black work uh, type designs. So uh, this kind of thing sometimes is important for black work. Um, some people really do like the back to look exactly the same, especially as uh, black work is purely line work. There is no uh, like filling in of um, spaces with color and things like that. It's purely pattern work. So what I've done is you can see on my fabric here, I've drawn a cute little heart and pencil. Um, you can also use uh, water soluble fabric marking pens if you're going to be drawing directly onto your fabric. I'm sure there are um, transfer stencils and stuff like that might, might be uh, uh, like wash out with water, things like that too. If you're going to use a pencil and it's um, potentially not going to be completely covered by your stitching, then uh, like for example if you're gritting your fabric uh, for a bigger piece then I would definitely make sure that you double check your pencil and the eraser you're planning on using on the back of your fabric and make sure it can erase cleanly. Some pencils are a little smudgier than others or your fabric might be a little softer. So uh, depending on that combination of uh, eraser, uh, pencil, and fabric, you know, you may or may not find that your pencil lifts off cleanly later. Um, yeah, I tend to use a white vinyl artist eraser. They're pretty good at lifting off anything. And they can be used to polish metal too, like uh, like war metals and uh, like silverware and things like that too, because the softness of them tends to pick up any uh, grime, which is kind of cool. And it doesn't damage it, which is awesome. So what I'm going to be doing is, I've still got my uh, needle threaded from the last video, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to do a double running stitch. Uh, so I went with this little heart pattern. So basically it's really, really simple to do. You can do this with your back stitch as well. You can have a kind of a look at your pattern and uh, basically it means that you, it's called a journey. You start at one end, go around, and then you come back. So, I mean, if you have a, a self-enclosed uh, portion that you need to backstitch on a pattern, then this would work really well for that. Um, or you can do it the same way that I showed you in the last video. So what you're going to be doing is going... You're skipping every second stitch. Basically, sorry, I'm trying to make sure this is centered in the video. So you can see I'm not going into every stitch like I was with the backstitch demonstration I did. So basically what you're going to be doing is you go all the way around and then you come all the way back. Like I said, the advantage of doing it this way is your back ends up exactly the same as your front, which may or may not be important to you depending on what your use is for this. Uh, particularly if you're doing something like a bookmark or something that might the back might be seen if you're not planning on lining it or whatnot, then this might be a useful trick because that way you're going to end up with your back looking the same as your front. It's basically reversible. So I'm just going to be going around and around. So yeah, this is a quite a neat stitch in that um, it does create rever the possibility to have reversible pieces. The only problem with the double running stitch, as you can imagine, is you're actually using up, I would say probably close to double the amount of floss that you normally would because you are going completely the one way and then completely the other way. So if you only have a limited amount of floss that you have and you want to use that particular color to do your line work with, then I would suggest not using this um, method unless you know you actually do have enough of your floss or you can go get some more. I know sometimes certain floss colors are harder to come by in the shops for some reason. Okay. She was mentioning in the last video about your threads twisting so another way you can uh, untwist them too is actually just to let your your needle drop and that will tend to untwist it. Alright, so you can see I made it back to the beginning, so what I'm going to be doing now is obviously going from here and then going back the other way. So it creates quite a neat effect. 
I know it's fascinatingly thrilling watching me stitch this. But hey, at least it's a small little pattern. So this would be quite good too for things like cursive letters if you're wanting to say write a message onto your fabric. The only exception obviously is uh, letters that have bits that aren't actually attached like eyes. The little dot for the eye for the lowercase i might be problematic. It wouldn't look exactly the same on the back and the front. Unless you can magically figure out a way to connect the dot of the eye without it looking bizarre. So in some future videos, I am going to be doing a little, few demonstrations about some blackwork stitches that I really like. I've only just started exploring blackwork, but um, for some reason I'm really recently into patterns and things like, especially like wrought iron gates and like window coverings and things like that. I just find the scroll work, the metal scroll work, really, really beautiful. And so I'm probably going to be incorporating some of that into some of my designs. So yeah, I will be doing some upcoming videos at some point about black, some basic black work stitches. So there you go. That is your little heart and I will show you the back. The other ones aren't going to look as pretty. But yeah, once you put that through there again. Obviously this is because I connected the thread from here to this one and then this one. But if you're actually uh, either using a mini pin stitch uh, which I demonstrated in another video. I'll put that link in the, the video description as well. Or um, another way to anchor your thread, like the loop method to start, and then you can do a small pin stitch to finish. Or you can, uh, another way you can do it also is to, uh, I'll just quickly show you. Another way to anchor your threads is to kind of wind your way around each individual stitch like this and go a couple up. And then a couple back down and that will actually lock your thread into place. I'd still be careful if you're going to be washing, so going up and then going back down again and that will actually lock your thread. Um, if you're going to be washing it, then just be careful, like be mindful of the fact that you don't have knots or anything like super secure holding the end of that thread in place. So just don't, obviously don't scrub the living daylights out of it. I don't have little scissors. Trim that off. So there you go. Now, obviously, if I hadn't carried the thread from each little sample piece, then that would look exactly like the back and the front. So there you go. That's a double running stitch. It's another way to do your back stitch around your pieces. And if you have any questions, please feel free to let me know in the comments below. And I will talk to you later. Bye for now.